fav- one of my favorites. Tsitsushka. <laughs> ah, Tsitsushka, okay. It's very difficult. Yeah. But very cute. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm um, sitting here with Hannah, and we get known in, in Impact Hub Budapest, where she's the, the community manager. And I was a volunteer here and uh, under your hand, and I really liked uh, your geek skill, how you could uh, create procedures, and it was very easy to, to co-work with you. So I think that's a, a skill which everyone or most business owners lack. So this is why I invited you to come, and thanks for coming. Happy to be here. So my first question is, uh, tell me your story. Uh, how did you get into Impact Hub, and, and how did you start it here as a host? Uh, well, I'm from Canada, and uh, my partner is studying in Budapest and doing a master's for two years. So we both decided to come and uh, hang out in Budapest, see what the city's like. We heard really good things, and they're all true. <laughs> and um, so I was looking for different opportunities uh, to volunteer myself um, in a community that was uh, both I could survive with very little Hungarian um and but also not be totally separated from kind of the local community so i I contacted impact of budapest to start volunteering they had this community host role which seemed like a really fun uh fit to get to know the community and help support a new uh, social enterprise um and then as the first i was with the first round of volunteers here and then when i I uh, was finishing up my first volunteer stint. Uh, they asked me to stay uh, stay on board and to help train and uh, the new volunteers and build up the systems and kind of support wherever I could. Mm-hmm. And I was uh, thrilled. And so that's how I that's how I came uh, to Impact Hub Budapest. I would like to ask you, what are procedures and uh, what are the main benefits of using procedures and processes? Procedures are anything that clarifies uh, how to do something. Thing. So whether that's a simple uh, checklist, whether that's a flowchart, uh, whether that's a spreadsheet, whether that's um, just a piece of paper or someone's um, uh, kind of way of doing something. Um, and they're so important because in, in the modern age, there's so much information overload and we're asked to do so much on a daily basis that we need to use our brain power for the important things and how to do a repetitive task or how to make sure everything is completed. Those are things that uh, if they're the same thing every time, you can just save your brain power on getting the good work done and just double check that everything's done at the end of it. Uh, That is why they're so important. So yeah, that was very inspiring. My next question is how do you build or how do you start to build a procedure? To start, uh, any time that you find yourself repeating a task, that's a good place to kind of write down a procedure. Uh, the really helpful way to uh, to build it is to ask feedback from the people who are doing it on a daily basis. If that's you, great, you can create the procedure on your own. If it's a team that's sharing this task or it's done by different people at different times, then ask people for how they think it would, should be done. What is the best way to have a procedure? What should it look like? What is the format? The most important thing is that the procedure is usable. Mm-hmm. I can write a million task lists and to-do lists and spreadsheets and things. And if they're never opened by anyone, then it's the worst procedure in the world. But maybe, uh, and I've had it where we've had a small piece of handwritten piece of paper, and that is the easiest uh, thing to handle one kind of procedure. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what the format is, but as long as it's useful and uh, by the people who will actually be using it, that's how to make a good one. Amazing. Okay. My next question is, uh, how, how do you make sure uh, that your team uses your procedure or your team follows your procedure? Uh, a really important aspect to that is to make it an evergreen document. So your procedure should be something that's always revisited. The Nothing should be set in stone because what worked a month ago might not work in a, a next week. Things are always changing as businesses evolve. You need to be able to respond to that and to um, have these procedures always be evolving. They adapt themselves. And to do that, 
I suggest constantly having feedback from the people who use the procedures. So if you have a team that's working on it, if you have a group of volunteers, or you have even like two people, but you, you need to have their input on it for it to be useful and to know what will, what will actually get, uh, get done so that they're put into place. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very good. Uh, let me ask, uh, what do you do when something goes wrong? So when your procedure is not working, or or something unexpected happens? Cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think uh, it's not when it happens, or I guess it's not. It's it's a question of it happens all the time. Um, things often get a loss through the cracks. The, there's a scenario that doesn't fit and then it happens and you're like well we don't know how to deal with this but then that's why you have these evergreen procedures so uh, as it evolves so do the procedures and then um then you just kind of learn from it so every time something goes wrong or doesn't fit then you say okay that's a great learning opportunity let's add that in let's fix that and then the next time that task will already be half taken care of because we figured out how to do it already oh. Awesome. Amazing. Okay, so thanks, Anna, for, for this info. I think it's very, very useful. Um, now, let me ask you about uh, simplicity. I know it from your blog that you, you're into this topic, and I think that's, uh, that's very, very important. I, I love this topic. And I think uh, this is one thing which everyone is missing in today's society. So I would be really glad if you could describe what do you mean uh, about simplicity. Yeah, for me, simplicity is a really broad topic. And it ranges from everything from choosing um, groceries with the least or no plastic to um, building your schedule into, or building your kind of daily habits into ones that uh, focus on working efficiently in, instead of just working hard and pushing through. Um, so it's very broad, but I think the um, it's the same as it's uh, Occam's razor. The, the simplest answer is always the best one. Uh, is very true. We there's a um, a move in the modern age, I think, to do too much uh, all the time, which is impossible and very draining. And I think taking a more simplistic uh, approach to how you uh, how your your day and how your work goes is very important, uh, and kind of helps make space for the other things in life that are also important, as well as from an environmental perspective. If you're choosing kind of the simplest. Um, the simplest options, whether that's from uh, uh, what you're going to eat and uh, to the ingredients in your uh, shampoo to the amount of uh, packaging that goes along with uh, the things you buy, or maybe you're choosing not to buy something at all. Though that those move to a simpler uh, style, it's very broad, but I think no matter where you apply it, it's very useful. Amazing. And what would you recommend? For someone, uh, if you could only like recommend one thing to make his life or business easier or more simple, then what would that one thing be? Uh, hire me! Yeah. I'll make your life better! <laughs> Thank you! My piece of advice is whenever you're about to take a new uh, action or new strategy or to are you going to buy something new to step back and say, is this needed? Because if it's needed, great, do it. Uh, implement a new plan, uh, add that into your day, fill your schedule with that great thing. If it's not needed and it's just kind of a desire or a want or you're thinking maybe that's a uh, would be a good addition, wait think about it more don't just dive in it could be something that's valuable but we often clutter our lives and our schedule and our plans with things that are not really needed and won't really move us ahead i'm not saying not to do interesting new things or take risks but really think about uh those what if it's not necessary think about why you're doing it and make good choices that way awesome okay Thank you, thank you for the wisdom, and I'm truly grateful that uh, I worked under your hand as a volunteer at Impact Hub, and I highly encourage you to to join Impact Hub and also to, to join the volunteer yeah. host team. <laughs> and thanks, Hannah, for coming, and I think that was an amazing day. Thank you so much, Lily. This was awesome. <laughs>